Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, uh, and thank you for joining our first Design Systems Essential webinar. Uh, today, uh, it will be about hiring for Design Systems. Uh, it's, uh, uh, we can say, a, a trending topic uh, about uh, new skills that we are looking for when uh, it's about Design Systems positions, uh, what kind of experience, what kind uh, of background and uh, soft skills and hard skills are uh, you know, necessary for, for, for this kind of, um, of new roles uh, emerging. And, um, and yeah, we'll try to answer um, uh, all of your questions to, today with our amazing guest uh, about anything related to hiring for Design Systems. Uh, but before starting, um, uh, feel free to join our Zeros uh, community. Uh, uh, you'll be able to ask uh, any questions that you have on our webinars channel. Um, and also, uh, one of the benefits joining uh, our Zeros community uh, is to get some exclusive content um, in uh, from uh, Zero High people about release and exclusive um, uh, updates. Uh, for, uh, for and also to get in touch uh, with uh, Zero High folks uh, directly. Uh, if you need uh, any assistance, uh, feel free to uh, message uh, Connie directly, who will be able to help you. And uh, of course, we will send you uh, the recording of this a few days after the webinar, so you can rewatch it. And uh, if you want to share it with your team. Uh, I'm sure that everyone here is a nice people, uh, but uh, it's always a good reminder to say that uh, we all need to be respectful with each other. So, yeah, just to be simple, uh, don't be a jerk, please. Uh, also, in parallel, we uh, are running a survey about hiring for design systems roles in 2022. Uh, if you are hiring for design system roles or if you are looking for design system roles or both maybe, um, uh, we really you know, um, encourage uh, you to uh, fill this uh, survey uh, to help you understand uh, what is it in 2022 uh, hiring for design systems roles. Uh, we will send you the links uh, directly if you uh, want to, to fill this survey. And uh, if you are not aware yet, we're also uh, planning uh, World Design System Weeks uh, in the third week of September. Uh, there will be a lot of, uh, of events uh, all around the world. Uh, and if you also want uh, to host an event, uh, you can directly check our uh, website is in systemweek.com to, uh, to to yeah to submit an event or if you uh, just want to have a look about uh, this uh, this event uh, and the um, and the upcoming events happening maybe in your in your town um, and now it's time to introduce our speakers uh, for for today i'm very happy uh, to have uh, this panel with me today um, we have um, we have uh, Ginny from um, uh, IBM who's running Carbon Design System, uh, Julien uh, from uh, uh, Sage who is a Design System uh, Director, and Audrey uh, from Open Classrooms who is a Product Design uh, Director. Um, and I'll start maybe uh, with Jenny to let her introduce herself if you if you want to. Sure, yeah. So uh, as it says, I'm the creative director of the Carbon Design System at IBM. And I've probably been in that role for now going on four and a half years. Um, but I actually, and this is really my first role that is internal facing where I'm, you know, I'm working for the company. All of my other jobs have been client side in, in the agency world or in the consulting world. And I come from brand. Um, so I'm a systems thinker through and through, but um, this is actually really my first job stewarding a design system. Um, even though I worked on various pattern libraries um, in my, in my, wearing my consultancy hat um, for clients. Uh, so I, I really kind of was hired um, to bring brand into IBM product. And we had kind of rebranded and created a new design language in 2018. And so that, um, and, and actually I had, had some connections from Wolf Bolins back in the, my branding days who brought me into IBM in 2018. They were kind of behind the rebrand and they put me in this role to kind of 
you know, liaise with uh, software engineers and product designers to kind of make this, this happen in product. Um, so it was a very new thing for me at the time. And I am still learning sometimes how to communicate with, some, with especially with software engineers, <laughs> but it's been an interesting journey. So that's, that's me in a nutshell. Awesome. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, Julien, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm uh, working for Sage for 14 years. As you can imagine, uh, this is my first uh, job as design system director. We've created uh, this uh, officially two years and a half ago. Um, before we had the, an initiative uh, made by some of our colleagues and designers at Sage for the last four to five years, starting to, to create uh, what became the design system. Um, and now it's an official uh, team, I would say, uh, and we grew up from four, five that we were uh, two years and a half ago to 12. Uh, so, so this is uh, interesting. Um, and yeah, I was I started at Sage as a kind of web designer, web developer, what we used to call that uh, 14 years ago, as I said. Um, so that was uh, some years. And um, I moved to uh, UX. I was on the marketing side for a, quite some time. And then I moved to UX, uh, driving products and product um, experience design. Uh, especially uh, an ERP that is called Sage X3, which is huge in terms of uh, functionality, very close to what IBM is doing. Um, and now I'm driving the design system um, team, and that's that's a very new kind of thing to do, but very um, enthusiastic, very interesting. That's me. Great, thank you, Sylvia. And Audrey, you okay? Turn? Uh, so, uh, as for me, uh, so I'm Audrey, I'm Product Design Director at Open Classroom. So, for those who don't, don't know Open Classroom, so Open Classroom is an online school uh, that delivers uh, diplomas for several types of uh, digital jobs like uh, mix designers, uh, web developers, uh, data analysts, etc. Uh, so, I manage a team of 20 people, uh, including product designers, but also content designers, user researchers, uh, and uh, one person with design ops. And it's that person who is responsible uh, for the design system, uh, of the design system uh, uh, at Open Classrooms. Uh, so our design system is called Classify. And for the moment, the core team is composed of three people. So this uh, design ops is Catherine. We have also uh, one full-time uh, staff uh, engineer, front-end engineer, that is Christophe, who's worked uh, uh, full-time for the design system. And we also have a product owner, uh, that uh, trace the roadmaps, uh, follow the delivery, uh, and helps uh, the team uh, with the communication with the squad. So for the moment, it's uh, quite a small team uh, compared to Julia. Uh, but for the moment, it's okay because the design system is very collaborative. Um, so everyone um, collaborates uh, and uh, creates a component or suggest component for the design system. So for the moment, uh, uh, it's okay with uh, with this team. Awesome, great. Um, well, uh, I think that you know, for uh, to start, uh, I have a question. Maybe for all of you, um, is um, a global question. Um, are there any trends in the hiring practice that you've noticed uh, uh, recently? Maybe uh, when it comes, you know, of course, to uh, um, hire uh, design systems roles. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe um, G G Jenny, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. There are <clears throat> tons of trends. I mean, I'm sure you're aware that salaries are inflated beyond anything we've ever seen before. Um, poaching is happening. Uh, we're seeing, uh, we're desperately trying to retain at IBM and compete. Um, and when people leave, sometimes they'll take slew people with them. It's the, the cards are in the hands of of the potential employees right now. Um, and the need for product designers is through the roof. I'm, I'm also noticing um, these kind of niche areas of, of, of subject matter expertise kind of always exploding in digital, like paid search, paid media, social content, customer experience, AR, VR, um, UX architecture. 
So like all of these kind of niche things or people who are just really versed in say, you know, the Amazon AWS platform, all of these kinds of specialties um, are very much coveted right now. Um, and I think there, there needs to be a self-awareness among companies about um, inclusion and diversity. I think employees are demanding that right now and that, that, they are, that companies are examining their hiring practices. And they're also examining um, their work-life balance and their ability to offer flexible uh, you know, work opportunities for people. And I think these are being demanded um, by employees and uh, companies really have to have to deliver to be, you know, to actually be considered. Those are just a few rapid fire <laughs> things I can think of, but um, a lot has happened post pandemic um, in the in the working in the work tech working world. Interesting. Uh, is there anything maybe different from uh, your experience, uh, Audrey or, or Julien, about uh, this? Um, design systems uh, uh, roles you, you uh, mean, yeah. For my part, I, I'm totally aligned with what uh, Jenny said, and we, we, we really uh, realized that uh, in the, within the next uh, years, so the previous years. Uh, for for my, my part, I think that one major trend is that uh, today we have open position around design system, and a few years ago, it was not the case. So this is something that is very different uh, and it means something because even if you are recruiting only a classic uh, product designer, I want to say, uh, you ask in the job descriptions uh, some uh, competencies, some skills around design system. So I think this is something that has really changed over the year. And for the rest, I, I'm totally aligned with, uh, with Jenny. I think uh, we need uh, to retain uh, candidates and to, uh, yes, to, to make them uh, uh, understand how we work. Uh, that's why uh, we write uh, a lot of articles on uh, our practices, on our design system, etc. So candidates don't have candidates. Uh, they don't have a bad surprise when they join. They really want. They really know uh, what to expect from us. I think it's important for recruiters to do that. Cool. Um... Julien, anything you'd like to, to add? Or... Oh, I'm, again, aligned. <laughs> we are okay. facing the same issues, for sure. Uh, it's clearly a fast-moving market right now. Uh, it's uh, incredible how fast uh, it is. It's not just on design system roles. It's on the entire U UX, or what we call, uh, at Sage XD, experience design. It by UX, research, and everything. And definitely, it's moving really, really fast. Uh, so you may have uh, you may interview a candidate uh, finishing the interview, and then twenty minutes after receiving, okay, sorry, but I've got an offer. Okay. You're like, like, uh. <laughs> so so this can be tricky. Um, the importance uh, for the work balance and life and per with personal life is really uh, a huge thing today, also that I may admit is a bit harder. I do understand, but it's a bit harder for me, maybe because I'm 40 and I used to, to start working on a company when I was really young in a way. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a change. I respect that. And this is very important. I, I also seen something uh, that is a, a global trend. So uh, I don't know, it may be the case uh, more for Jenny than, than for Audrey, but um, I'm receiving some CVs sometimes from uh, people coming from um, startups uh, and have absolutely no issues on that. The only concern that I'm seeing is how much startups, in order to compete with large scale companies like IBM, Sage and others, are tweaking the rules by changing the title to head of design when you have just one designer on the team or CTO, or this and that. And you have some folks that are feeling that when you are um, hiring for a job and saying, okay, so you would be standard level or senior, uh, they do think that you are like not considering them enough. And this is something that is strange. At Sage, at least, in order to become a senior, you have to have something like five to six years of experience. It means absolutely nothing to become a director after three years, which you can get when you're in a startup, but it's nothing to compare. But I think that some candidates have been so much torn, I would say, 
by the UX boot camps and all the stuff mm -hmm. that they do think that after three months on the Google uh, UX boot camp, uh, they will have a job offer at 100K wherever they are located and they will be director or head of design. This is not the reality. And sometimes we have to bend the rules in order to make that closer to what they expect. But I think that this is just a, a trend that will not continue for a long time because companies cannot continue to have you know, people that are directors after just three years uh, compared to the rest of the team members that are here for 10. <laughs> Sorry, I may have been a bit too long, but that, that was a, a different vision. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, thank you. Um, and um, maybe more from you know the hiring point of view. Um, what are when you are when you start you know uh, looking for a design system manager or designer, uh, design system role? Uh, what are you know the the essential skills, the hard skills, or maybe the, the soft skills um, you are looking for 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 your for your design system team? Um, I'm, I'm curious maybe to know what you, what you have to say, maybe, uh, Julien about it. Okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, my, on my end, what I look, uh, after firstly is if the candidates has the soft skills that are needed for me to join my team. I have, I'm very privileged, uh, to have the team that I have today. I started with, uh, so some of them. Uh, were uh, named to be part of the team. Uh, many others, I've hired them and uh, everything is going pretty well, uh, which, is, which is good. We are all split in uh, four, five different countries, even six now. Uh, so it's not easy. We're not meeting on a daily basis. So the very first thing for me is to make sure that I can find someone that can fit the team and uh, most of the time, uh, not always, because it's not always possible, but most of the time I'm asking also one or two uh, members of my team to join the last interview in order to see if they are pleased with this person, if they do think that this person can, can join the team really and fit. Uh, if they were, it's, it never happened, but if they were telling me, mm, sorry, but no, we are not sure, then I would decline the, um, this. Um, so soft skills are very important how you can blend it to something that exists someone that is willing i definitely prefer someone that is willing to learn willing to to push and uh evolve rather than an expert that knows everything from scratch yes i've done that i've done this etc personally when you can put uh, and push someone to elevate when they are willing and when they are uh, strong enough, you know, to, to go through all the steps. So those are the kind of things that I'm looking after and definitely at least product design knowledge. It's not exactly the same job that we're doing on design systems, but if you don't know anything about product, then on my end, I will not hire you. Cool. Uh, Audrey or Jean, do you have anything else to, anything else to, to add maybe? I was going to say, I love um, when I meet someone and they're just a tinkerer. Like I love inter intellectual curiosity. Like when you're interviewing someone and people are just looking at things, you know, and they're following other design systems and they know what's happening in the landscape and they're interested in tooling and they, they're, they're kind of like trying things out. Um, and, and maybe they have, you know, like they want to tell you about like uh, other hobbies they have. Maybe they carve spoons in their, you know, in their garages. But it, it's just, it's nice to see somebody who's diverse and comfortable. And that tells me that they're flexible wearing a lot of hats. And we have a very lean team. Um, so sometimes we, we do have to jump around. Like we lost our content person. You know, we do a lot of docs writing. So we have to be comfortable kind of sometimes trying our hand at animating or writing or, you know, wearing those different hats. So I love seeing people who <clears throat> just seem like they like to try things. Um, and then also, yes, definitely it's about like, is, is the person a listener? Do they want to learn? Um, I want my team to interview. Like we are very collaborative and it's a very flat structure. It's very non-hierarchical. So 
You know, I'm not interested in the person who's staring at the person in the interview who seems to be in charge. You know, it's like everybody's listening to everybody and everybody's collaborating. Um, and then also one huge thing for us is like, we almost want to see working files over portfolios. I love it if somebody can talk me through iteration in a messy ass working file, you know, and they can say like, okay, um, this is, this is my research. Here are my iterations around these problems. And this is, you know, these were the recommendations, you know, and then you can get stakeholder alignment even among non-designers so communication is is like huge in that respect too okay okay uh it makes me think that uh do you when it comes to hiring design systems roles uh do you have maybe some specific case studies to 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 provide to 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 candidates like actual uh actual exercises yeah yeah you know what? I, I've been thinking a lot about this because I was asking my coworkers, I'm like, have you ever like conducted an exercise in an interview? And I have to say in my entire life, even in agency, I, I never have. And I've certainly never been involved in spec work, which I think is, you know, kind of something to stay away from um, when you're ask, you know, asking people to basically give you ideas that you can then monetize. But um, I, I don't, I've never even conducted an exercise. Usually I just really like to see people's, um, people's working files. And I like people to be able to pull apart their contribution within a project if they're showing me a portfolio and talk about you know, that kind of um, problem, uh, solution impact kind of framework. Um, and really be able to pull apart kind of the levels of work that they and intervention they were able to do within a project. I, I think that's the, the the problem with portfolios. It's just, you know, it's beautiful. It's great. Probably the product of 12 people's work, you know, who knows? Um, but you need to be able to like kind of pull apart your involvement and really speak to it at a high level and at a granular level. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to hear what other people say about this, about actually giving people design exercises, because I cannot say I've ever done it. Yeah, I don't know if Audrey or Julien, you have experience with, with this. Yes, uh, on my team, we, we have uh, exercises uh, to test candidates, so it depends uh, on the role. Um, I know that, for example, for the, the staff front end that we, we hire for, uh, for Classify, for our design system, uh, the engineering manager gave him an exercise and he had to uh, to make an audit of uh, one of our page and, and to uh, to uh, analyze it uh, visually and technically uh, to to analyze the quality of the code uh, the overall consistency and so it was a good exercise to see uh, what what recommendation we did we, we do etc so i think it really depends on the role uh, for design systems i think it's it's uh, it's not really easy to make an exercise but you can make people uh, speak about their experience with the design system, uh, give a definition, what is it for, for them? Uh, do, do they already create a design system or um, make one evolve, et cetera? So you really understand their maturity on the subject. Um, so I think yes, speak, to speak with them is a, is a good way. And regarding the, the, case, the cases, the technical cases, yes, we do it, and it works. Uh, it would work well, but it's never on a subject uh, of open platforms because, as Jenny uh, said, we don't want to monetize or use uh, anything that people are doing. So we uh, we inventing uh, another uh, company that make uh, cooking classes, and we ask uh, for an exercise just to see how they think. Uh, what kind of research uh, will they have done? If, if they have this, this programmatic, what kind of questions they will ask, etc. Interesting. Uh, and so we were talking a lot about, you know, soft skills and what you're looking for uh, when you are hiring uh, people. But um, is there maybe some specific uh, red flags? Or concerns that prevent you from, you know, uh, hiring a, a, a candidate. Uh, I see. I, I, I see that you're laughing, Julian. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm ready to go for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it will go on what I said just before. Uh, definitely, someone who is self-oriented. This is definitely someone that I will discard pretty fast. 
uh, because um, it's what Jean said just before for the portfolio. You, you can show a portfolio. That, that may be good. You may have participated in that, sure. But you've been on a team of 12. And what you've done, it's, big, it's the result of the researcher who looked at after different things. And then a first UX and UI person. And then the design system that has been created, et cetera. So if you are um, self-oriented, like, I want to become that. And this is my job. And this is my kind of destiny because I'm the best. I know that. And I've mastered this role. Now, definitely, at least for me and for Sage, no, it's the, totally against our values. So this is something that uh, that won't work. Someone that claims also that he has or she has uh, worked on almost everything. Oh, do you know that? Yeah. Do you know? That? Yes, I know this, 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 and I've and implemented that, that, that. And I, I sometimes think that some candidates are looking after the buzzwords, you know, the keywords like, okay, I will put some design tokens here and then some elements there and then research and then, okay. But you know what, at least for me, I'm not looking for a Swiss knife. I'm yeah. looking for an expert or a standard. We have different levels um, into this area, not someone that can cook, that can, uh, I don't know, uh, burn a tree that can uh, do thousands of things. No, I'm looking for someone that can integrate the team and then learn from others. And the, uh, and the last thing is also someone that can uh, give and bring to the team. If you're just taking from the team the expertise, the knowledge, uh, et cetera, then it's, it's not good. Uh, definitely, you have to bring also something that can be your fresh eyes because you're just joining the team. That can be something on your experience. That can be your personal feeling. That can be because of your different culture. So you have a, a different uh, view, I would say, on the things. But definitely, it has to be an exchange. You are not just taking a salary and taking the skills from the others that have worked years and years in order to be at this level, and then you just run out somewhere else. No. Yeah, I, I, I agree with everything there. Um, also, lack of pre lack of preparation and knowledge about, say, carbon. If somebody's going to come and interview about our, you know, like I, I expect them to have base level knowledge of, you know, our design system, our company, um, what we're about, and also <clears throat> have have done their research about what it takes <clears throat> to work on a design system. Um, so I, and I, and I expect engagement and preparation. Otherwise it tells me they don't give AF about it. Um, again, like I was talking about before, I, I, I want somebody who, you know, like a lot of times we'll do group interviews, although there'll be multiple people. Um, you want somebody who's engaged with everyone. Um, one, and I think is open to alternative solutions to problems, you know, and, 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 and loves to talk through that. I think that really speaks to process. Like um, people are, 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 are kind of really stuck on one way, you know, like it, it, that's, a, that's a red flag for me too. Um, and then again, it, communication, communication, communication. Like I, I love it when people can take me uh, on the ride and talk about the project and, and really like um, just kind of communicate at, at every level about it, high level, um, and then talk about the individual pieces that really went into the whole, um, those types of things. Okay, uh, and uh, would you say that, uh you are also expecting a certain level of seniority of or experience uh, when it comes to these these positions. We, I'll just talk again because we never get to hire seniors. So ever since I, I worked for agency a million years ago, the unicorn is the hungry junior or mid level designer because that's who you know like you can usually afford to hire. That's who's on budget. We've we've lost seniors and had to backfill with juniors. So there's a particular kind of, you know, person who's hungry to grow and that kind of intellectual curiosity, that kind of tinkerer in a, in a junior or mid-level that I, I look for um, because that's usually what we can hire. 
And um, so I, I, who wouldn't love to hire a team of creative directors who, you know, like work non-hierarchically, but that's, that's just never kind of the reality. Um, so I, I love people who come and want to learn and grow on the team and expand their, their skills. Um, that, and then they can kind of grow with the team, um, which is, which is great. Uh, I agree, and, but I think it depends on the on the kind of role that you're searching for, because I think if you're searching for someone who is going to contribute a lot to the design system and be part of the team, it's okay, totally okay if it's a, if it's a junior, but I think if you really are looking for someone who is going to be the owner, really the, 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 the lead, or really the people who will have the, the overall vision, I think you need someone who is senior, but of course, senior product, uh, system designers, I don't think it exists <laughs> today, but I think um, you can you can hire uh, experienced product designers that really uh, because they are going to take some decisions that will impact the old products, and they have to really understand uh, the different uh, the the different domains, the different um, uh, functional purpose of every component. So I think it's important for that kind of role to have someone who is. Uh, senior. And I don't know, uh, Julia, if you agree, because I think that uh, you said something uh, that was not uh, uh, quite aligned with that, but I will, I will yeah. to have your, your point of view. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so on my end, I'm very privileged. So I, I've seen people saying that design system seniors don't really exist because design system are too new. It's true, but not fully true. At least on my team, I have experienced people uh, I will take the senior researcher that I have. Uh, she is very talented, like the rest of my team. Uh, she's a senior researcher. She is making that for years. Uh, and the fact for her that she is on design system is not totally changing her experience. And she is fully a part of my design system team. Uh, in terms of uh, UI and UX, I've seen the name of one of my team member here. Uh, so she's senior. Uh, she is clearly at a high level, and I'm looking at promoting her to principal uh, very shortly. So she knows that. So it's not an announce that I'm making in front of everyone. <laughs> um, and definitely, she is driving the entire Figma in her case. She is trying, uh, driving the entire Figma library, which is full of components, which is consumed by, we have 230 designers at Sage, including content writers, et cetera, and everything. So that's a huge, huge piece. And when you own that, definitely you have responsibility and you have to get ownership. And the ownership is also coming with the title, with, of course, the salary that we were talking about. So on my end, I'm very privileged because I have, I would say, half of my team that is uh, senior, uh, mostly coming from product, but they are clearly senior. And after that, definitely the new ones for the new job, like we have an accessibility design fully focused on the accessibility, finding someone that is senior on accessibility. We have one at Sage. It, it's it's uh, really great to have this guy, but uh, it's been a nightmare in order to hire someone at his level. And they are very, very few. So it's even more niche than, than the rest of the things. So I'm privileged, I think, but we can find people that have a lot of experience on products for sure for years, and that can easily translate because they've been working on different products and they had already this kind of mentality and mindset of design systems, even if it was not named design systems. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, and uh, at Open Classrooms, yet I, I didn't hire someone specifically for the design system. It was someone who was for the designer, it was Catherine. She was there. She uh, totally knew the product. She knew a, a lot of things. She was uh, the one who started the design system, etc. And so now she is design ops. And what is interesting is like when I proposed her uh, this, uh, this new job, uh, at first she was not quite uh, sure she wanted to do that because she said, okay, but I'm going just to do execution. Uh, will it be a, an interesting uh, position? And I told her, you are going to do product design, but you are not going to do product design for the final user. You are going to do this for the design system and for internal user, but you are going to do research, you are going to interview people, you are going to iterate on what, what you propose. 
So I think this is interesting and we have to, to also make people understand that they can evaluate uh, that way. I, I think sometimes that one of the things I've noticed is that when people are too niche or too senior, um, they are not going to wear the hats that we need and they're not gonna be as flexible as we need them to be. Um, and because this field is new, I, I, but systems thinking is not new, I, I like it when people kind of show the chops that they have at, at systems thinking and, and branders can do that, you know, like um, people who really understand how to iterate and scale an idea or a system. Um, but then they come in and, and the tooling can change overnight. We just migrated all of our kits from Sketch to Figma and I am not a Figma power user and all of our sketch power users are now having to become maintain those kits and become figma power users kind of overnight so things like that happen um which undermine our expertise or our feeling of mastery you know where you're just like whoa the world just changed so i, I think we all have to be really really nimble um in that respect with the things that we consider you know ourselves masters at um in order to really stay abreast of this field. So I, I like people who can, you know, be a little com like comfortable with uncertainty in that respect um, and be adaptable and flexible because I just think our, our field is a field that is just constantly in flux and evolving. And, you know, I'm, I'm willing to deal with somebody who's, you know, like, oh, I've never heard of a token before, you know, like I, we can explain that, like we can talk about, like, you know, we, we can talk about tooling, we can explain, um, you know, react, we can explain like, but those things change and um, we have to be able to change with them. So I, I guess that's kind of what I was getting at and that I, I, I want that kind of nimble, uh, uh, um, agile mind um, who's, kind of going to adapt. Great. Uh, I see that we have a lot of questions from the audience. And uh, we've had uh, several questions about around uh, team makeup. Uh, and so I think maybe it will be helpful for everyone to maybe if you could share um, uh, and have a, uh, yeah, if we can have an overview about your team size and roles uh, for each one of you. Uh, Julian, you want to start? Okay, I can. Uh, so on our side at Sage, so I, I, I'm saying Sage again, not to make any promotion. It's just because I've seen a question asking for where are those 230 designers are. So it's at Sage. Um, so we are exploded in different uh, business units, but we all belong. The XD team belongs to the same EVP of experience design. Then we have uh, so different product teams for sure, that are uh, in charge of different products. And we have the design system. The design system is the global thing of the global uh, business unit. Um, it applies everywhere to everything. And uh, we are a team of 12. Um, we have, uh, so I have on, on this team, um, content writer, UX, U, UX UI designer, researcher, accessibility designer, PEO, uh, UX engineer, basically dev, just to name that it's a dev that is working with UX. Uh, so making sure that this person has the capability to, to work with designers. It's, it's not a, an, an easy skill, I would say. Uh, did I miss anything? Uh, um, team lead shortly um, and mobile designer. Um, yeah, I think I've named everyone. If I didn't, then... Claire uh, will add that in the chat. That's impressive, yeah. <laughs> uh, so some, oh. yeah, yeah, one type, basically, uh, we just want to make sure that we do reflect on the design system exactly what we have on the teams in order to make sure that we really understand and that we are not biased. And that's why also we have an extended team so who don't report to me. They are referent of all the major product that we have at Sage in order to make sure that all the designers that report to this referent can uh, push for their concept and ideas and then coming back to us and that we exchange together. The goal is to make that a community. I don't want to have a team. The team is 12. It may grow up to 15 or something like that later, but it, I, I don't think that I will make it something like 20, 30, 40 people. It makes, at least for me, no sense 
The product designers are the ones that have to, commun to communicate and to collaborate with us in order to make something that is really valuable for them. It's not us teaching them what to do on the product. They are smart enough to do that. See. Uh, what about you? Yes, as I was saying at the beginning, uh, it's, it's not a big team as uh, Julien. Uh, there are only three people. Uh, so the one, one person with design ops, so she's not system designer, she's design ops and she's had those other responsibilities like uh, the tools, uh, she see with me the, the budget of the different tools, uh, she helped me with a lot of things, uh, she made templates, she made a lot of things, uh, really uh, her, her goal is to uh, help the, the team to work better, so the design system um, to work better and, and uh, efficiently, so the design system is one solution but it's not the only one. Uh, and then we have a, a full-time uh, front-end uh, staff, front-end uh, engineer, uh, and a product owner. So for the moment, it's three people and a lot of uh, collaboration. I, I also have on my team content designers, and they work a lot on the design system. Uh, they write a lot of guidelines, etc. So it's very collaborative. And um, we uh, we also work with the marketing uh, for the brand part. And so the marketing helps us also uh, and document together uh, the, the brain part. So uh, three people and a lot of other people, but not on the design system team. Cool. And uh, I'm curious to know how the uh, carbon design system team is. The, the carbon? Yeah. Um, it, it's weedsy. We just reorged. So it, it's carbon is IBM's global open source design system. And we have a global team and we have kind of a three in a box that sits above three squads. And so I'm the creative director, Linda Cara Tenuto is the project manager for all the squads. And then we have one dev manager for all the squads. And the squads are, we have a system squad and they handle our Carbon React library. They maintain it. Um, and that has 10 devs on it. Um, and so we've got 32 components, 33 components and, and 10 patterns um, that are global. And then we have three UX UI designers who sit on the system squad and their day-to-day -day is really heavy in um, kit maintenance because we maintain right now two kits in Sketch and Figma for four themes. Um, we've got a platform squad, which is actually, the, we, they run our website. So they kind of deal with, um, we're, we're redesigning currently our website. And so we've got five devs, including two backend devs on that platform squad and two UX or one content and one uh, UX UI designer. And then we have our .com team, which only has five developers and two UX UI designers. They also maintain kits and um, maintain a web components library. So it's actually super lean. You'll notice we have one content person and we have no researchers right now. We've lost our researchers. So we have to kind of be uh, the researchers. Um, and we've got more devs than we do um, designers, but I'd say all of the designers would refer to themselves, not just as visual designers, but as UX UI designers. Um, so I, we all are all also responsible for writing usage docs. Like whenever we, uh, whenever a new component comes up, we have to write the usage in the style docs. So we are, we are also wearing the writing hat. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of how carbon works. Um, and all in all, I mean, maybe 40 people ish. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Um, there's another question. Um, they say, can we hear, can we hear more about hiring designer to report to a design system manager? Like, uh, how, we, how can we, how we can see their tech skill set with building healthy components in Figma, uh, knowledge of, co of code base and orga organizational skill set. Um, yeah, very, I don't know if maybe Jenny, you have experience with, with, with this about, you know, uh, designers reporting to design system managers or Julien maybe. <laughs> I'm um, not sure. Yeah, maybe Julian. I'm not sure I totally understand the question. Let's have Julian answer. <laughs> Thank you very <laughs> much for the hot potato. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on my team, basically today, uh, the 12 people that I've named are all reporting directly to me. So there is no manager on the design system team. 
Uh, it's changing, uh, but not through a manager. So at Sage, as I said, it's a large scale company, just like IBM. So it's taking time to progress. And we have a lot of uh, different levels coming from apprentice to standard, then senior, then uh, principal or team lead, and then uh, manager, etc. So right now, what I can say is that I'm, uh, I have um, an internal uh, person who is principal today, uh, who will surely become, uh, and I would say have a translation uh, into horizontal translation in a way to a uh, team lead role. So um, this, uh, this is just uh, in order for me to make sure that we can bring the best for everyone. Today, half of my team is on UX UI. They have specific needs. They have uh, specific work that they are doing compared to the rest of the team, which is more segmented. You, you can't compare, uh, I would say, uh, an accessibility designer need with a content writer need with a researcher. So what I'm doing is kind of exploding the team. It's, it's really not what I want to say. It's not the right term. but. Uh, the design team will be under uh, the, uh, a principal that we already have, who is uh, from this world. So he is a principal product designer working on my team now, and he will be the one looking after this. Uh, it's just in order to make sure that I can get everything. And until now, we were up to six, seven, eight people regarding the maternity leaves, etc. So it was still manageable. But now that we will be five or six on the UX UI part, it's way too much. So I still want this team to feel uh, empowered to do the right thing. And they shouldn't have to come back to me for everything. They should work with them, challenge each other, have a commitment together, and then come back to me and say, okay, this is what we would like to have. And then I will fight for it uh, and make sure that it, this happens. So I don't know if it's uh, answering the question because it was kind of strange for me or vague, but yeah. I, I think I understand and I, I agree. We So our squads have autonomy and they have a dev and design lead and they have a lot of autonomy to make decisions and even, um, even bring us their roadmap and, and their prioritizations. We will sometimes, you know, make sure they're aligned with leadership. Um, sometimes we, the three in a box sitting above the squads, communicate more with leadership. Um, but the squads have a lot of autonomy to solve their own problems and run their boards. Um, we, we operate an agile model. We use Zen Hub and GitHub. And, um, and I sit in along with our head project manager on all three of the squads uh, uh, sprint planning. But basically, they have a lot of autonomy. Um, and that allows them to really feel empowered, I think, to um, kind of control their situation and their process if that makes sense. I think so, yeah. Um, I think uh, I just saw a question that I found very interesting. I'm not sure that any one of you have a community manager in their team, but I'm curious to know what you think about it because it's something that always, you know, uh, I always thought that it could be use, useful at, at some point, you know, someone focused on adoption and product uh, team engagement and same everything around your design system. Uh, uh, do you think that could be, you know, uh, a new role emerging uh, around design systems? I can try. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, because I would like Audrey to be able to speak a bit more because I think that I'm stealing everything. So I'm sorry, Audrey, do you have something yes, to yeah. say first? Yes, I can, I can answer. Uh, um, for me, for the moment, I don't think it's necessary. And that's why uh, we want people at this position who have really good communication skills and they really have to work on that. And that's why, yes, I don't think that I will um, get someone who is very shy and uh, don't like to communicate from this position because I think it's very important. Uh, after having a, a community uh, <laughs> manager uh, only dedicated to the design system, why not? Maybe in a huge uh, structures, maybe like IBM or Safe. I don't know. But if it's if it's a small structure, I don't really see the point. So we just need people who, who like to communicate, who are passionate about Zen systems, who, who give their their passion to others. Uh, and yes, we know how to uh, to uh, write a uh, really note <laughs> and to to do that uh, uh, very uh, often. 
Yeah, on, on my end, I don't see that neither coming. To be honest, uh, we are, for the moment, we are private. We will go public just like uh, IBM, surely by the end of this year. At least this is my uh, personal plan. Let's see if we can make it. Uh, but it serves only our um, products, ISVs. Uh, so basically ISVs means uh, third parties that are consuming Sage app and creating add-ons and extensions. So this is the main purpose, I would say, for the Sage design system to, to exist. It's not to be consumed, especially by other folks. We, Sage for now is not looking at becoming an open source uh, design system, even if uh, technically uh, we have a, I'm sorry because it's called carbon, but we have a carbon, not design system, but we have a carbon framework that exists for, I don't know, six or seven years based on React, um, which is supporting most of our products now. Uh, so this is open source, but the design system on, on its own, for now, I'm not looking after this. So if I don't look after this, then what's the point of having um, someone to heavily communicate on that? I prefer to have people, just like what Audrey said, that knows exactly what is the design system, that can talk about that, that can go in front of uh, some of our partners and exchange on the benefits and, and take insight from them more than having someone that can communicate uh, just like putting Sage is uh, doing design systems. I, I don't personally see the value for us in my context. For us, 100% uh, hire me that position. I absolutely want it. Um, the community manager of adoption right now, that's our number one OKR on Carbon as the global design system. We are absolutely on the hook to track adoption among especially our lever teams and the teams that are making the company money. Um, we also have, um, this is like a whole other topic, but a constellation of local systems, kind of like Spotify does, um, that, that run their own pattern asset libraries for the business units. Um, and, and they also track adoption for us, so we leverage our community. Um, but we also, our support is a huge thing for us and we run Fireline support. So we, you know, every day there are point people for people who are having trouble. We just, uh, we just dropped a new major release too. So we're constantly doing education and outreach, having sessions, um, you know, kind of meeting with teams um, where they are to help them like in the moment adopt. Um, so that's, that's actually what I'd say is the charge of Linda, Jeff and I, the three in a box at the top of carbon. Um, our number one priority is, is adoption. All right. Well, we have a few minutes left, so we need to, to wrap up. And uh, there's still a lot of questions. Sorry for not being able to answer all of your questions, but uh, this is yeah a very large and rich uh, topic. Um, I wanted to thank you all for joining this webinar and thank you, uh, our amazing speakers for joining, um, uh, this, uh, first citizen system essentials webinar. Um, as we said, uh, this is a recorded webinar, so we will send you, uh, the recording in a few days, uh, if you want to rewatch it, uh, or if you want to share it with your teams, uh, uh, there's also the survey uh, about uh, hiring for design systems roles in 2022 that uh, you can fill if you want to participate in. And uh, yeah, and uh, feel free to also join Zeros, our, our uh, Slack community. Um, and I think that's all, we are just on time. Uh, thank you again for everyone for your participa participation. Uh, and uh, yeah, hope to see you soon. <laughs> Thanks. This went so fast. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Way too <I> fast. <laughs> I know. One hour is not enough. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely. You will have to adjust Jill, next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, everyone.